So Vicky and the kids swear I'm blind as a bat. What are we doing here, Squirrely? You're getting new glasses because you're half blind. Well, I don't care what she says. A blind guy can see that something here just don't add up. Good grief. Smallest line you can read for me. So this lady takes me back into this room and tries to question me to death. She was a bossy, feisty little thing. <laughs> I can't read none of them. Okay, perfect. She had me doing all kinds of stupid. All oh, three. Three. Four. Four. Go back. Three. No, go back to two. That looks good. That's not a choice. Three. What the hell, woman? We could have had this whole thing licked if you just if you stopped. Would stop. What can you read for me there? It says, I don't know. It does not say I don't know. O-F-L-C-T shit. One, four, two, or do they look about the same? About the same. Okay. We're going over to this side. Let me know if it's better at one, four, two. Five. One. <laughs> Four, two. Go back. It's fogging up again. What the hell's wrong with this thing? Four. Is any of this making sense? Yes. Four. What can you read there? Just read the bottom row. The bottom row? T, Z, V, something, C, or six. Hell, I can't see. How does that look? On both eyes? Yeah, you have both eyes. T, Z, Y, six, G, or something. Good. Okay. Give me a second. Is that right? Close enough. Wait a minute, E, something. Hell, I don't T Z B E C. That's it. Better at one, better at two. Why can't you make something that makes sense? Like it like words like people read. cheat then. I hope I'm not trying to read something in that damn thing because I can't see shit. You're, you're gonna look at my ear right here. Which my guess is you well, you know where your ear is on a head? Yeah. Well that's where I want you to look. So what is on your YouTube channel? Oh, <laughs> Our daily life. Well, you know, I can't subscribe and give you more points if you don't tell me about it. I don't want you looking at this. <laughs> so once I got through all that rigmarole, then I had to go out and pick out frames. I don't care what we get as long as I don't end up looking like that. <laughs> Jeez, crackers. Seriously, it's going to fit on my foot. That looks dumb as hell. I can't see any better when I'm wearing them. These are the ones. That's it. We're done. Here. I don't have time for all that stupidness. I got better stuff to do. Oh, what's up, everybody? So it's Tuesday morning, and uh, I'm in the doghouse. I didn't shave. Vicky's aggravated with me. Such is life. But I waited for Billy to get here this morning, and he never showed up. So par for the course. I left without him. I'm not going to wait on him no more. I just go. We're going to go look at a F550, a 2000 model F550 diesel crew cab truck it was a cab and chassis originally it has a west coast style bed on the back with a gooseneck um, it's really a pretty decent little truck um, it's a one owner 61,000 original miles 7.3 turbo diesel this thing has very low miles 61,000 miles it's clean as a pen has no rust one owner six brand new radials on it got aluminum wheels needs cleaned up a little bit here and there it could use the paint buffed out some new headlights and maybe a new grill uh, it's been sitting and it's faded we're gonna go pick it up bring it back up to the shop hook the trailer to it and see how it tows if we like it we may buy it now the backstory here is that junior's been shopping for a truck for a few weeks now every once in a while he'll come up with something really good but it seems here lately he keeps coming up with hillbilly Jim Bob trucks that are lifted on big mud tires and all kinds of stupidness that don't make any sense. So I about half got him talked into this old Ford and I know it's a good chassis. It's a 7.3 liter V8 turbo diesel built by International. Pretty stout old truck really. So this is my opportunity to Get him into something decent before he blows his wad on a big pile of junk. Or at least, so I thought. So we hooked the old Ford to the 50 foot race car trailer and we're getting ready to test drive this thing. I figure we'll put it into the wind out on the interstate 
If it runs pretty decent for the first two or three mile, we'll take it down into the hills down near Zanesville and pull it back and see how it does. Unfortunately, <laughs> we didn't make it that far. We got on the interstate and that's about all that truck I needed to see. I could tell getting on the on-ramp that my old big block 454 would walk away from this thing pulling that trailer. But I'm not giving up on it yet. I'm waiting to get it in high gear, get it under a load, put some boost to it, and see how it does. some hot shot secret everyday treatment. It needs something because it's got problems. I'm glad we didn't go down in the hills or that would have been bad. My gut instinct told me not to take this thing down in the hills or we'll never make it back and I was right. We stopped at the first traffic light as soon as I got off the interstate and this thing's got major problems. I to unhook this bitch and get something else. Dude, it won't fucking move. That's it. It's done. The old Ford just barely got the trailer off the state highway behind us. But this little teeny tiny gradual hill was more than it could handle. My plan of attack was to let the truck sit here and idle for a little bit and refill the fuel filters in hopes that it would finally, maybe, have enough fuel to take off up the road. It won't fucking move. What a complete piece of I had a pretty good idea. The only thing wrong with this truck was the fuel filters were plugged up, but my chances of talking Billy into buying this Ford were about slim to none by this time. I just wanted to get this trailer back to the shop, get it unhooked from the truck, and get this truck back to the dealership as quick as possible. I'll take 454 cubic inches any day. Not 440. <laughs> I'm sh I mean, it's not, that's not really fair. There's something wrong, but God dang it. 61,000 original miles, you'd think it wouldn't be this bad. I finally managed to get the truck and trailer back to the shop, unhooked the trailer, and now we're bobtail headed back to the dealership and the damn thing still won't pull itself. I had traffic backed up behind me and had to pull off the side of the road in this farm lot to let the fuel filters recoup. I guess this week's just my turn to get aggravated at every damn turn I make. I mean to tell you this thing is on flat damn ground, 30 miles an hour, flat on the deck, won't get out of its own way. This thing won't even pull the hat off my head. I was so frustrated. Here I talked all this thing all up all night to Billy about this was the best year for 7.3 this, 7.3 that, and here we are with a Toyota stuck behind us. I can't even get out of their way with this piece of junk. I'm on around. It's Ford day. <laughs> we may not make it back. We're not gonna make it. 
over right here and let it idle. No, 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 no. Call this guy. So, the dealership is like a mile and a half that way. The problem is there's a hill and railroad tracks. And I don't want to get stranded in this damn thing on railroad tracks or on that hill. So I called them and they're just going to bring the dually back to us. And they'll get it back down there, whatever they're going to do. But this is terrible. I mean, it won't hardly move. Oh, reliable. So once we got that Ford back to its rightful owner, we went to lunch and found this thing, a 2017 Dodge Ram 3500, not far away, about a 20 minute drive south of where we were. So we headed to Logan. Now after driving that Ford, it didn't take much to convince Billy to sink his nails into this Dodge while he had the chance. These things are hotter than a firecracker right now. You can't touch them. If they're up for sale in one day, they're gone the next. So Billy signed his life away, filed the paperwork, put the down payment down, and away we went. We couldn't hardly wait to get home and hook this thing to the trailer and see how well it tows. Based on just driving it without a load on it, this thing's gonna do really, really good. And we couldn't wait to show it to Vicki. She's been so upset over that last trip in that dually, getting stuck on two different mountains with no way out of that situation. She can't wait for a nicer, newer truck. In typical Vicky fashion, as soon as she saw the truck and opened the door and looked inside, she had all kinds of questions. First one being, can we afford it? Oh my goodness, she was all worked up over this truck, but so happy that we could finally travel in peace. We had her in a really good mood until she found out Weasel Pig got into her mums and chewed the shit out of her favorite ones. That's all right though. We made one hell of an upgrade in the tow rig department today. That is for sure. Yeah, that's perfect. What are you doing, taking screws out of the wall to reuse them? Yep. After dinner tonight, we all went out to the shop for a little while to do some interior decorating. Vicki had a whole bunch of stuff that people have sent to us that needs to be set out on display. And Junior made the mistake of letting her know he knew where the screw gun was. There's a reason why we pay Kenny for a lot of things around here. <laughs> now, if Vicki would just ask us to build small block shivvies for her, we wouldn't have any problem with her honeydew list. But when it comes to carpentry, that's not our forte. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you could have just followed the line of the paneling. You know what I mean? Like, pick two spots in the same row. Who was it? Molly. <laughs> I'll go a little higher. <laughs> Good news is I started low, so that, you know, the board will cover up the mistakes. Right. Hopefully we never need to have that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Way to go, Junior. Perfect. Look. What? Who sent you all that stuff? Little Sophia. Look. <laughs> Thank you. What you got there, Scrappers? All right, guys. So everybody's gone in for tonight. Billy's gone home. I think Tommy and Allison went back to her place. 
and uh, it's just me out here in the shop right now. Just about done for the day. Um, all in all, today was a good day. Started out rough with that Ford, but uh, I think Billy got a really good truck today in that Dodge. Uh, that truck is absolutely gorgeous. It rides and drives just like a brand new one. Um, I think that's going to make a big improvement <laughs> with our traveling, um, here in the next coming weeks. It's starting to get cold up here now. Fall starting to set in. You know what that means. We head south. Um, generally now is about the time we start making plans for October, November, December, and into January. Uh, a lot of times we go down to the pad that time of year because we can't race up here. But that truck's going to make a world of difference in our travel arrangements. So really looking forward to that. Um, sorry I didn't go through the later rounds where uh, Billy raced out at uh, Brown County. Um, the long and the short of that deal is uh, we just we really weren't on the right tire. You know, Billy and I have this ongoing battle <laughs> over uh, I like the Mickeys, and he tries to run these Hoosiers. It's whatever. I really feel like most of the time, wherever we go, we really need two sets of rims and two sets of tires. Um, if your first pair or early pairing, first round, a lot of these places, probably better off on a Hoosier. Okay, but if you can sneak past first round on a Mickey and not knock them off by second or third round, if you're running front side, boy, I tell you what, I'd rather be on a Mickey. That's what Brandon Mork was on. That was what Nick Michael was on. Um, and those guys were flying. Um, it's hard to 60 foot with a Mickey if you're on a Hoosier or pretty much anything else. I think the Phoenixes are pretty good. We've run those before. We don't have a whole lot of data with them. We don't have many runs on them. But from what I can tell, I think that the, the Phoenixes are a pretty good um, in-between, between a Mickey and a Hoosier. The Phoenixes will definitely 60 foot better than a Hoosier. And they still seem to work pretty good out the back. I've seen Billy knock them loose and recover out there on a Phoenix that I don't think a Mickey ever would. But... It's just one of those things, if you can stick a Mickey in the first 60 feet and roll them out the back, they're hard to handle. I mean, you just can't hardly get under them. But So we didn't really have the right tire on the truck. And uh, Mork's car just makes an astronomical more power than the truck does. That's just all there is to it. And there's no sense in us throwing more boost at the truck than we've ever run at it before to try and beat Brandon and risk scattering the damn thing because we just got it together. And it's not the best short block. It's uh, Ohio Crank, Ohio Rods, you know, probably not, <laughs> probably not parts that are rated for the horsepower that that engine is making, uh, even on 30 pounds of boost. Um, that truck will make a lot more than 30 pounds, but we just didn't feel like risking it for that. Uh, we weren't really prepared uh, to go that fast over there. And so we just kind of let it go. Uh, if Brandon made a mistake and we squeaked by, that was fine. But Brandon didn't make a mistake. He made a really, really good pass. So congrats to Brandon Mork. He won that whole deal over there and uh, he deserved it. He did a really good job. Uh, I don't want to blow his head up any bigger than I probably already have. He's got quite a head on his shoulders to begin with. <laughs> but he's just a, he's a good guy. A little mouthy sometimes, a little full of himself maybe, but his wife more than makes up for his downside. So anyway, guys, um, this weekend, I don't know where we're going. Uh, it looks like rain almost everywhere that we're interested in going. Um, I really can't say yet. I really don't want to say yet because Billy hasn't made up his mind. There's two or three races all on the same date here in Ohio. I hate that. Um, I hate to have to choose. Um, if I had to choose, we'd go to Marion to support those those people. Uh, it sounds like it may be the last race for Katie and, and Kevin up there. I'm not sure. Based on their Facebook post tonight, they've canceled the rest of the season. I hate to see that. Um, but 
it's kind of looking like rain here. It's looking like rain everywhere we wanted to go. So I don't want to say too much about where we may or may not go until we get closer to the weekend and examine the weather. So one thing I can tell you is ain't nobody safe now because that damn Dodge is giving us some wheels. We can roll now, boys. We can freaking get out of town. So you never know where you might see us show up next. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you all tomorrow. Good night.